for my action research project, I created a, a blog on the atomic bomb in which the students had to look at this atomic bomb to then help them write an essay um, on whether or not the United States should have dropped the atomic bomb to end World War II. Um, they had, students had to submit this assignment on Edmodo, which is very similar to Facebook, and it's a social networking site for a classroom, but it's in a very controlled setting. Um, for this assignment, I liked using, using Edmodo and the blog because I think the blog is something that the students could look at and get excited about. And then using Edmodo, I think not only did the stu students submit the assignment to me, so I could give them fast feedback, but some students even took the time to upload their essay to Edmodo to get other classroom feedback on, which I think is very helpful for students to get. Um, two of my favorite lessons that I actually taught this semester used uh, technology in the classroom. Um, the first one was on Pearl Harbor and Japanese internment camps. Um, Basically, through this lesson, the students watched a series of four video clips, and then they filled in a frame that had questions on the video clip, so while they were watching it. And then after each video clip, we would discuss what the answers to those questions were. Um, this lesson was my favorite for two reasons. First off, the first question on the frame was, when was the date of Pearl Harbor, which is something that I hope most students know, but almost every single student in my class raised their hands when I asked them what the answer to that question was. And that's something that doesn't happen all the time. And so it was very exciting to see that every student was not only interested in the video clip, engaged in what they were doing, but excited to be able to answer the question. Um, my second reason this is my favorite was because my students were pretty much outraged when they learned about that Japanese internment camps happened and happened here in the United States. And it's very reassuring to hear that these children were so upset by this injustice and taking this material that I was teaching them and learning from it and hopefully will take that in an effort to prevent injustices like this from happening again. And I think that matters. Um, and then the other my other favorite lesson that I taught also started out with the video clip, and this was on the nuclear arms race. Um, and I actually got this video clip from Matt, so thank you, Matt, for giving it. Um, but it started out with a video clip in which it was a simulation of every atomic bomb that has been tested from 1945 to 2008. And it's astounding how many it was. And using this video clip, my students could clearly see um, what the nuclear arms race was. And this is another one that every student in the class was engaged. They were all turning to their neighbors, are you watching this? Can you believe this happened? And so it was something where students were engaged by this technology, but also learning about what this event was. We continued this lesson by um, doing an activity with the doomsday clock, in which the students discovered when, when the tensions were most high during the Cold War. Okay, and then the final part I'm going to talk about where I think I've grown throughout this semester deals with collaborative planning, which if you would have asked me what last semester collaborative planning meant, I couldn't have told you. I probably could have used my prior knowledge of what collaborative meant and planning and figured it out. But it was something that I never really experienced or wasn't aware of. But my cooperating teacher actually plans with um, a teacher that also teaches social studies and language arts. And I discovered the importance of working with other school colleagues to create the best pos possible lesson plans and curriculum for your classroom. Um, obviously, three heads are better than one. And I truly felt like we sat down and we talked about ideas and we bounced them off from one another. And that is something that I hope I will be able to continue um, in my future teaching career. All right, so what's it all about? What did I learn throughout the semester? Um, I want to start out talking about my reflections by reading an excerpt from my educational biography. Um, this is something that I wrote, I guess, in September. Okay, so this is really before I started my early field experience and before I started my student teaching. My 18 years in the education system have shaped the person I am today. 
I would not have the desire to become a teacher if I did not value the education I have received. My teachers and my interactions in the school have shown me how important education can be in a child's development. Without a teacher like Mr. D, I might not have developed a passion for history. Therefore, I want to be a teacher like him. I want to be passionate, passionate enough about my subject matter that I make students fall in love with it. I want to teach in an interactive manner that engages all of the students in the learning process. And I want to be able to reach my students in a way that five years down the road, they would be able to describe me as influential in their lives. I do not believe I have enough personal experience to know the best way to do all these things yet. So for now, I must look back at my educational past for ideas. The reason I read this clip is because, this excerpt, is because when I started in September, I really didn't have any classroom experience. I didn't have any idea of where to start. I had a good idea of what I thought good teaching looked like and what I wanted good teaching for me to look like. But throughout this whole experience, I now have added so much knowledge to my educational journey. I have my early field experiences to look back on, and now I have my student teaching experiences to look back on. And that's going to help me become a stronger teacher in the future. Um, a quote that I found that pretty much also sums up my student teaching is this. We must at all times remember that we don't teach a subject, we don't teach to a test, we teach specific children with specific needs. I think throughout my student teaching, I, I want to say, I, um, I put a face on education. I walked into that classroom in January with probably the textbook definition of what a good instructional strategy looked like or what a good behavior management philosophy looked like. But now I realize that what matters is the students in the classroom and that I need to differentiate my instruction and choose my instruction based on them. Every student learns different and I think ultimately I have all this stuff, I have all these experiences, but what matters is getting to know my students so that I can better teach them. Um, I want to end with kind of talking about a student that I think made an impact on me this semester. I'm going to myself, I'll try not to. Um, this is a student that, to be completely honest, I thought I made no impact on. Um, to describe him, he was very apathetic in his learning. Um, he did no homework, let alone very little classroom classwork. Um, so it was something that, it was frustrating for me. I would come in every day and I wanted to be like, why am I working so hard for this kid that doesn't seem to care? And it was something throughout the semester, he started doing a little bit more work and I started to see some growth in him. And seeing that growth was almost more frustrating because what he was showing was it was just very intellectual. You could tell that he had he had good things to say. He was just choosing not to say them, which for me was almost more frustrating than a kid that you know is at a lower level and struggling with material. He was just someone that was choosing not to care about his own education. Um, and so I just want to read a note that he gave me on the last day of class. Dear Miss Lynch, I'm sad that you're leaving but I wish you luck in the future. Thank you for all the help you've given me. Given me, I might have looked like I wasn't thankful, but I was, and I don't think I would have gotten through most of the year without you. And so, getting this letter reminded me why I want to be a teacher, and it's truly for the students. And this was a student that I thought I had no impact on, and yet, truly, I did, and that's what I want to keep with me throughout this whole experience, and remember that those students in the back of the room that maybe I don't think I'm impacting, hopefully in some way I am because ultimately that's what matters. Yeah. Yeah. Try and go to Scholar. I don't think it would work. That's why I told you to turn it off. Turn it off.